So one of the videos I made this year was targeting your species. And it was all about using the right bait, using the right rig to catch a fish, you know, a particular fish, a specific fish, targeting that fish. And the thing is the bait and the rig are important, but you're not gonna catch a fish if it's not around. For example, if you wanna catch a pompano in the surf in December or January on Oak Island, chances are you're not gonna. You're gonna have to go to Florida for that. So this video takes a look at some of the fish we caught month by month uh, in 2021 and the fish that you'll see we caught each month and the rigs we used and it'll just give you a little clue of like what can you catch in january what can you catch in february nothing what can you catch in march april may all the way up till back to december right now so let's go take a look at some of the fish we caught some of the rigs we used and it'll help you out as you target your species in 2022 hey happy new year let's go let's go fishing <laughs> I, so when we were at Hagen Sons, I picked up some shrimp head on and fresh shrimp. And I think it made all the difference. Look at this double header whiting on that fresh shrimp. I don't think they liked my Publix frozen shrimp, but when I got that fresh shrimp, I just think it made the difference. And in the winter, that's the type of stuff that makes a difference because uh, <laughs> look, it's not easy. <laughs> not every time you reel it in, it's going to have one on there. And that, that was my uh, expression there. But after a while, I kind of just, I kind of hit a little, maybe a little school of them, and I was just getting lucky. But now, no. eventually, I, I hooked into, and I really, I'm going to go back to that fresh shrimp that I got from Hagensons, and uh, and, I, and I could tell it was a big fish as I was pulling it, and I'm like, this guy's fighting, this is a nice fish. And I got him in, and I'm like, yeah, now I got myself a little whiting. My, my daughter, who's coming over tomorrow, was like, I need some, um, I'd like some smoked fish dip. And I'm like, oh, I got to get a fish for the smoke dish. <laughs> now, another fact you might want to know is that in the winter, <laughs> you can make a fire. You can get a permit from the town. You have to go to the town on their website and they will email you and tell you it's okay. I believe it's from the middle of November till about the um, end of April. You're allowed to make a bonfire as long as you um, have some way of putting it out and you can call 911 in case it got out of control. Um, so make a little fire, keep your wife warm while you go fishing. Now. Yeah, he's probably bigger than 12 inches. So here's where I'm fishing. You see the waves? I'm fishing right in front of where those waves are crashing over. Originally, I was fishing beyond them and I wasn't catching anything. So I started fishing closer and that's where they were. Uh, I will say it was a little window of opportunity. Um, I had gotten down there and I caught some and I, and I, and I kind of filled my bucket with the whiting and puffer I'm going to show you here. And then it just died out and everything just stopped. So there was a little window of opportunity. I just think I was in the right, the right spot, the right time. This was around 40th Street, by the way, if you, just if you're curious, on Oak Island, 40th East. And here's another one. This is my second. Oh, this is my um, other puffer. Now look at this puffer. This is a granddaddy puffer. Look at this thing. I think that could be a citation puffer. Do they give you citations for a puffer? Because he, look at that. I'm like, whoa, he's like nine inches. He's this ginormous puffer. So I'm like, I'm keeping him because like I said, puffer's my favorite. We'll see. This trip is going to start out in Davis Canal, and I decided to bring uh, two rods with me. The first one here I'm using just to uh, see if I can catch some trout. And I had a little lure on there, and lo and behold, as I was just trolling along, I did snag my first trout. And I was pretty happy about it, except for he was a little small, but a really nice, beautiful fish. And you know when you do your first cast and you're just paddling along trying to get to your fishing spot, and you catch a fish on the way, that's a good, that's a good deal. So I was like, this can be a good week you know I already got a trout <laughs> so obviously I let this little guy go and I thought well I'll just catch another and I cast back out <laughs> and I snagged some of the weeds and it just instantly cut off that lure so I lost the lure <laughs> which is the first part of ridiculousness that we're going to go across today so I went and I got my little pink rod and I was like I'm going to catch some fish with a little pink rod and I'll just put some shrimp I had some fresh shrimp that I got a cleanse I'll show you later uh, that shrimp and I just put it on there and I started pulling in some some fish and I got some black drum um, this one in particular was very impressive so I pulled him up 
and you know they fight so great black jumpers fight so great and they taste great and this one was probably you know he was definitely over 14 inches he might have been 15 inches but uh i had just kind of got out there and i'm like you know what i can get a bigger one uh, i'm gonna let this one go shrimp and also i'm going to set up a bluefish rig now this is a five out hook on a steel leader i've got a six ounce that's a five ounce um, weight there i'm going to be able to cast it out real far and i picked up some frozen finger mullet this guy right here now what i do with the finger mullet is i sort of thread it through the hook so i'll put the hook through the eye right there and then i'll pop it through and i'll pop the wire through as well now i use the wire because the bluefish will cut you off they have really sharp teeth now I'll take it again and I'll stick it in about the belly, maybe the middle of the fish. So it's coming out the other side, just like this. And then I'll pop that point back in one more time. So it's coming back around and that's going to expose a pretty good amount of the hook, but not expose all of it. And then I'll pull the leader through and you can see the hook right there coming out the back. So if the fish comes up and he's going to chomp on it, he's going to grab a piece of that hook. Now, last thing I'll do is I'll take either. I'll take some of the miracle thread, or I'll just take a zip tie like I've got right here. I'll stick the zip tie through the eye, get it around the fish and tie it on nice and tight. This way the hook's not gonna come out because a lot of times the fish will come up and they'll grab the, they'll grab the mullet and they'll rip it off. Um, so if you have something that's gonna hold it on like some miracle thread or a zip tie, it just secures it on there a little better. But and it, it's a mushy fish anyway, so you just don't want it to come off the hook. So I like so I had been up there around 79th Street or so. I had been fishing over an hour and a half. I had caught little else. And all of a sudden, I got a hit and I reeled it in. And lo and behold, I was so excited. Not because of the size of this fish, but for this species. I finally got the bluefish on the finger mullet. And you know what? Where there's one, there's more. So I'm going to get back out this week, change my tactics, start fishing with a lot more cut bait, and see if I can get some decent sized blues. Meanwhile, this guy's going back. Hey, let's get out there. Let's go fishing. My last stop for the week, 33rd Street, and I decided I'm not going to bring any bait. I'm going to go down there, and if I can catch some sand fleas, I got sand fleas, and if I can get some ghost shrimp, because it was low tide, I'll get some ghost shrimp, and I'll fish with whatever I get. I could not find any sand fleas. It's been so hit or miss. Some places I've found them, some places I haven't, but I was doing pretty good on the ghost shrimp, so I thought, okay, I'll just walk around, pump up a couple of ghost shrimp. If you so I, I collected a pretty good amount of them in a fairly short amount of time, and I decided, okay, let me go fishing with them. I had a double drop, triple drop rig, actually, store bought, tourist rig, I know, I'm lame, uh, and I decided I would just cut them in half and use a piece on the top and a piece on the bottom and leave one of the hooks free, um, because I was like, I'll, I'll get more use out of them as opposed to if I just use one whole one. And my plan to use only found bait worked out really well because I caught, drum roll please, da -da 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 -da, my first pompano of the season. And not a bad looking pompano either. Fairly happy with that. One of my wife's favorite fish and I'm going to take him home. <laughs> He's coming home with me for dinner and we're going to cook him up. Um, I measured him and I think he was about, about a foot, um, you know, to the fork length there. Um, maybe maybe less, a little less than that, but a uh, nice size pompano anyway. Anyway, finally, let's go fishing the city pier of Southport. I've never fished on this pier, um, and it's always been intriguing to me. You don't have to pay like you do on the Oak Island Pier. Um, you can you can just walk out there. And there was a couple of guys there already fishing, so uh, I figured they must be they must know something because they look like they'd been fishing there before. So I thought I'm not going to go too far out on this pier. I'm just going to go a little bit past them, and then I'm going to set up right about there. So they weren't too far away from me. I could keep my eye on them, see what they were doing. They were throwing fiddler crabs, uh, wanted to get some sheep head, and they were throwing some, I think some finger mullet, uh, and for, I guess, flounder, even though they couldn't catch them, they, they were trying to see if they could, I guess. <laughs> and it was a great place to watch. Uh, that is not an island, that's a barge going by. <laughs> you know, you get to watch the big barges go by, which is so incredible how big they are. And that wasn't even a really big one. All right, I brought my two rods, my pink rod, which I'm just gonna put some, I got some fresh shrimp on here, and I just figured, let me just drop it down and see what's gonna happen here. So I just cut up some little pieces of shrimp. That's going to go down. I'm just going to keep it right near the pier. Maybe catch one of those sheephead. Who knows? Do they like shrimp? I've never caught a sheephead before. I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. If I knew, I would have brought some fiddler crabs. Had I known. 
Um, but the little pink rod did not disappoint. Like right away, I got the hit on it and I was reeling it up and I'm like, what fish is this? Figured it was a pinfish or something. And no, lo and behold, it was a puffer. How crazy is that? I have not caught a puffer in the surf since March. They just kind of go away. But for whatever reason, here he was um, and I let him go um, because I thought I'm not going to keep this one little puffer. But then, like, in two seconds later, I had another bite. And I'm like, hmm, that can't possibly be. And so I reeled it in. And lo and behold, it was, the little, 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 little drum roll, please, another puffer. And this time, the guy who was fishing over there was like, hey, if you're going to keep throwing them back, why don't you give them to me? Pass them down here, buddy. I'll take them. And I was like, all right, I'll give you my puffer. So he was very happy to have it. Nice big puffer there for his bucket. And um, and and he did not get disappointed because I'm going to pull up a few more before the day's over. But um, And then the guy caught what I guess they were looking for, <laughs> a flounder. I thought these things were extinct. Aren't they extinct? We're not allowed to catch them. Um, but he did. He caught them. And this would have been a keeper, too, if this was the summer. And the guy just kept saying, oh, this is going to break my heart. This is going to break my heart. <laughs> he had to let it go, which he did. So, you know, even though I don't have a video of it, you have to take my word for it. Anyway, instead of watching other people fish, I decided, let me go fishing again. And yeah, I caught another puffer on that fresh shrimp right there. So my last fish on film I caught was this next one coming up here and he was small but it was a little black bass and I talked to another guy he said he's caught some keepers on the Southport Pier so that was intriguing so from puffer to black bass to flounder I mean there's some nice fish that you can be that can be caught on this pier so I would I would suggest you go down there and and just take a little look around and, and fish maybe you Waves have been strong this week, been lots of wind, but so much bait out there, even with the waves. So I decided, let me take the cast net out, stop playing with dead finger mullet, and let's get some live stuff. Like the fish were kind of starting to snub their nose up at the dead stuff, because they're like, why do I want to eat dead finger mullet when I can get all this live stuff? So I got out there through the cast net, pretty difficult to do in the heavy waves, but the, if you land on top of a school, you're just going to get some because there's just so many when they're in a school. So I ended up getting them nice and big finger mullet. These guys are nice and much bigger than you're going to get out. If you've seen previous, previous videos when I was out in Lake Davis Canal trying to get some, they were a lot smaller. These are nice and big and chunky. And getting them in the bucket's always a trip because they just jump out as soon as they get in there. So you got to like, oh, he's got to pick them up, put them back in the bucket and keep the top on. So here's my three out hook. I stick them in the tail. Um, I find that you can stick them through the head. A lot of people do. And I think they live longer if you do that. But um, I find that the fish come up and grab, grab the bait from the back. So sometimes I'll reel it in and just have the head on. So I like to stick them in the tail. And the next day I went back to fishing. It was Saturday and I, I took the, the group out from the rec center out fishing because we do the fishing school there. And this guy got his pelagic right here. Nice little bonnet head. Uh, caught on some mullet just like we've been fishing all week. Um, you can catch these things on crabs real easy. Um, this one just happened to take the bonnet and I just got the pliers out because I'm like, eh, got some teeth there. <laughs> um, but we let him go back into the ocean. You can eat these things. Um, they're not bad, but this one was a little small. So we're just going to release him, photo op, and then back into the water. First, I start off with just getting a piece, maybe about a foot, maybe a little bit longer, of the American fishing wire. And I'm just going to cut that piece off right there. I've got these scissors which cut right through it real easy and snip it and there you go I've got my piece I'm gonna take one of my three out hooks and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna attach this hook I'm just gonna take the first tag end and stick it through the eye of the hook and then I'm going to lay it flat along the back of the hook next I'm going to do barrel rolls one two three about ten right along the back real tight one after another and when I get to the bottom I'm going to take the other tag end and go back through the hole, the rabbit goes around the tree, back through the hole, and I'm just going to cinch that tight. And that is going to hold that hook on real nice, um, easier than doing a haywire twist, get it on really quick. So next I'm going to show you, I forgot to mention beads before, I've got some beads. And the reason I get the beads is so it stops the float from coming down and hitting and smacking into the the hook or the weight uh, later on when I'm doing the weight. So I'll put a bead on. I'm going to take my little float and stick that through there. And I'm going to stick another bead on in case it floats backwards. If it's going backwards, the fish is pulling another direction. I want to protect my hook in the back as well. That might be overkill, but it makes it look real cool. 
and that's that's pretty much the beginning of the rig I'm now going to take a barrel swivel and I'm going to tie what is called a haywire twist <laughs> you can look up a video on these on YouTube real easy how to do it but I start by just making it kind of a Y shape and then I twist that Y shape together and I'll do that maybe seven times or so so I'll keep pushing it out so it keeps staying like a Y and then twisting it and twisting it and that's the haywire twist and after I've done about seven of those I'll take the wire and hold one end straight and then just bend the other as I'm going to do here around making barrel basically barrel rolls around it like I did earlier on the hook and I'll have about seven of those or so and that is going to hold that swivel it's not going to come off it's a nice tight little haywire twist and it's going to hold that whole thing together so that's the bottom of my rig right there I put my minnow on there and I'm ready to go but now my luck had changed because I got another hit and I started reeling it in and I thought it was gone it started running towards the beach so I started reeling in quicker and then I realized it was on and it was the Spanish mackerel yay so what's different than the other two times well I caught a shark that was different but only thing I can think of is the day and the tide was coming in instead of the tide going out so maybe that's the trick maybe that if you ask me when's the best time to fish for Spanish mackerel I'm gonna say cast it far when the tides coming in because there you go that's a nice Spanish mackerel We're gonna measure him he's probably in the 20 to the fork 21 22 inches there I don't know 20 inches somewhere in that range decent sized Spanish mackerel no doubt um, 21 to the fork I'm gonna say yep right after that I got a really nice hit and I'm like wow this is a nice fish I'm not sure what this is but I'm bringing it in and even when I see it I'm not sure what it is I'm like this is a great looking fish and I'm like is it a, is it a puppy drum is it a it's not a whiting I'm kind of looking at it and I'm like man it it looks like a croaker <laughs> well I think it is a croaker it is uh, and I've got a couple of big croaker, but this is probably one of the biggest one. This is a citation croaker. Look at the size of this thing. I'm going to measure it here, but I'm sure it's about 12 inches. Um, and it wasn't just 12 inches long. It was a fatty. It was like almost three and a half inches fat. So for a croaker, I, I'm just not used to them being that fat. Look at that big old belly on him. So that was uh, my citation croaker. And I probably could have kept him and he probably would have made a good meal, but I decided to let him go. A croaker that big deserves to, uh, to keep swimming. So he got to go back in the water. But there's a nice looking, I, I'm, I'm guessing it's a croaker. Who, who's going to argue with me? It looks like one, right? Out again. This is a really, really nice black drum. Get out my little measuring stick. I had to open it up. Yeah, this wasn't a 12 incher. This one was going to be a keeper. And I measured him and I was really shocked to find he was about 18 inches, not quite 19, maybe 18 and a half. And that's probably a personal best for me in the Davis Canal. I've caught. Now this is the second spot we're fishing besides the surf here in the ICW, but I'm using the exact same setup, double drop rig with shrimp and uh, one-out hooks, and I got myself a sheephead. I was so excited. I've never actually caught a sheephead before, at least not in the ICW here. Now some people catch them under the bridge, I've heard, and over by the jetties, but just to be out in the middle of the ICW here and, and catch a sheephead, I was pretty excited about that. Pulling like the same way the other one did. What do we got? Shark. Oh, it's a big whiting. Look at that, mama. That is a nice size whiting right there. Let's see. Let's see. 
fish talk the other night. Look at that. Definitely a 12 inches. Over here, right? 12 plus. The fatty, too. I think I'll throw him in the cooler. So I found the fish. They're out in the middle of that channel there. 